Thanks for watching this video. If you're not coming back and this is your first time seeing one of my videos, uh, just go ahead and subscribe, please, so you can see the rest of the videos on this 1950 Chevrolet 3100 that we're building. So um, today's video is going to be about the wheel selection, not really the wheel style selection, but the size, the fitment, and how I came about measuring to get the correct fitment for this vehicle uh, because it's, uh, it's important information and um, if I had access to it it would have saved me a lot of time the only modification that I see that will need to be done which I figured that anyway is you can see where it's really really close to the frame um, I have about one maybe two millimeters uh, between the frame and the back of the rim so I'm gonna notch out that you know and just uh, weld a plate back in and just have a nice notch for uh, clearance another option you have versus notching it out on the back uh, well on the frame to clearance the back is to actually move the wheel out you can do that by adding a spacer, you know, a hub spacer right here. Um, you could probably go with like a quarter inch and then move it out enough, but I'm going to notch it out so we have clearance on both sides because I don't like the fact that it would bring it out here. And I have a little bit over a fingers uh, width here clearance. And uh, so I say it's about three quarters of an inch. Um, and then it's really good clearance here. And so uh, you also have to keep in mind you have a, a bracket that holds this fender or brace that goes up and curves up and goes over, you know, with the fender. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and clearance it, you know, in the back just because maybe, uh, maybe we might, might wanna get it a little bit lower. I have to adjust the airbag. Um, uh, purchase or whatever that the airbags are sitting on uh, to get it to come down lower because that's the that's the maximum drop That we have and it's about seven inches off the ground. And that's a little bit high. I think I can go down a little bit lower Because uh, I have clearance in here. I'm gonna try to bring it down. Maybe three or four more inches um, ride height So to have a nice uh, ride height and I only know if I use airbags on this vehicle. Uh, we set it up with airbags, but um there are no bags on the front yet. It's just that uh, CPP uh, suspension on the front, um, the the IFS. So what we'll end up doing is probably just uh, just putting a um, a static suspension on the rear, um, something like some coilovers or something like that. So stay tuned to the end of the video. Toward the end of the video, I'll do all the measurements and show you how it went about getting to where we are now um, it's not complicated you just have to be pretty precise when you want uh, to try to fit so much rim width within the fenders of one of these trucks so here we have uh, what I was using as the setup wheel for the front which is basically just a Chevy rally um, and you can see it next to the wheel that we have built now the wheel up front, um, the offset on it is a zero offset, and I think it's a eight inch wide wheel. So I just went with the same measurements for the front. Uh, it was fairly easy. So this wheel is just increased in diameter. You can see the difference in diameter. Um, so the, the wheel that we have built is a 20 inch in diameter, but uh, it has the same uh, width so it's an 8 inch wide and uh, zero offset so I'm going to start it up and turn the wheels and we're going to look and see the clearance
carpenter square or whatever, framing square, and I put it on the edge of that hub, put a straight edge on the edge of the opposite hub on the face of the rotor. And I took a, a yardstick and measured from that, which was 48 inches, and to the edge of the straight edge. And looking straight on, it's about almost about seven inches. So I added those together. And so roughly it's about anywhere from 54 and 7 eighths inches to about 55 inches from hub to hub. So that's your measurement from hub to hub, which is an S10 rear end. That's the rear box label for the wheel. And this is the front wheel box label, uh, US Max. Ended up using coilovers on the rear. And this is the tire that we used on the rear. And they work out pretty well and look pretty decent. So here I've drawn a diagram of the rear axle that I'm using. And the measurement that I came up with was 54 and 7 eighths inches. Anywhere from 54 to 55 inches. Uh, it was probably about more like 15 16 54 or 15 16 But I didn't have that um, the 16 um marks on the on my yardstick so I just went ahead and did the seven eighths but so either way it's from mounting surface to mounting surface that can be your rotor which is your brake rotor is what I have on this rear and I have rotors or your your brake drum mounting surface so that's gonna be really the zero point right so if this wheel were had a zero offset, um, then from here to about right here would be the same, pretty much, because it would split right down the center of the rim. But that's not the case here. What I used was about, I think my back, they call it backspacing when you have the wheel built, or you can just put in a metric number. Uh, backspacing is usually um in inches uh the offset would be in millimeters so i guess they can convert it when you fill out your bill sheet if you have it built we had our wheel built so anyway that would leave the lip over here and the back spacing for this wheel was 50 millimeters so the lip you know would be hanging out toward the outside of the vehicle i have more lip than i have uh back spacing here so um another important part of it is the actual the hub bore right here that's the the hub that you see sticking out and um that would be the actual hole that's bored in the middle of the rim um and then you have the the holes for the the lugs studs to go through um and that would be that the the bolt circle so these when you have a wheel built this is what you're going to want to know right here all this is is just to get it set up where to fit inside of your vehicle and you're doing all the the math and you know the fitment and whatever else you need to do um but after you get all that worked out and then you know what wheel you can fit under the fender or whatever now you have all your dimensions you can send it off to wherever you have in your wheel built and these were my dimensions and you'll need basically five basic things when you know when you send it off to have it built you need the bolt circle which is five by 4.75 five and uh five on four and three quarter uh my diameter is uh 22 and i think in that the diagram that i had earlier i had a 20 inch we went ahead and went up to a 22 uh when we had it built because we could fit it under the under the fender um, the width is 12. The back spacing or offset, as I mentioned earlier, um, we went ahead and um, went with metric, a metric number. I think it what it what it required or what it called for on the bill sheet. So that's 50 millimeters we use, and the hub bore in millimeters. 83 millimeters. 83 millimeters is the actual distance from here to there and that's basically the diameter 
uh, of that hub bore. So you have enough clearance that'll fit over the hub. So those are the basic dimensions that you'll need um, if you are going to have a wheel built. On this particular truck, we had to uh, what you call tub it out or cut out the bed and uh, to get that wheel to fit underneath there. And I think we had to, um, there's not no thing to it. I know we had to, to cut into the frame a little bit to clearance the wheel uh, because it was almost touching. In any lateral movement, it would, it would touch the frame. So we clearanced it on the back like this a little bit on the frame of that 1950. And so um, those are the basic modifications that were done. On the front rim, I kept it simple and easy. This is the, illustrates the, that rally wheel I used to set it up with. So smaller rim with a larger tire, aspect ratio wise, and the custom wheel is a larger diameter rim with a smaller aspect ratio tire, but keeping the same outside circumference uh, or almost the same outside circumference as the, uh, the setup wheel, which made my job easier as far as setting it up. And so you can see up here, I have a zero millimeter and that's for the offset. And you can come down and you can see where it splits up. I got four inches behind the mounting surface and four inches in front of the mounting surface, which adds up to be eight inch total width, rim width. So that's fairly simple on the front. And um, as I explained earlier, uh, the zero offset comes from, you know, this splitting right down the middle of the rim. And so you'll have, like I said, four inches from the back to the center and from the center to the front. And uh, that should give us uh, a zero, which I ordered a zero, but they sent, which is the box is labeled, um, 01 millimeter. So I'm assuming that's one millimeter offset. I don't know why they did that, but it works. So um, we're not gonna bother that. Um, the bolt circle is the same as the rear, five by four and three quarters, which is, you know, it's a five lug and the bolt circle is four and three quarters. The diameter went down to a 20 inch. We use a 20 up front. The width went down to eight inches. Uh, and the back spacing or offset, like we said before, uh, is one millimeter or so. Um, hub bore stayed the same. The tire size we used is um, basically uh, 245, 45, 20. And what you'll have to do with that tire size is you will have to find your tire that's going to work with the rear tire. So that you have to buy them in a set. Um, well, you don't have to, but you probably want to buy them in a set. Uh, same brand and same type tire, you know. So you're probably going to have to play with these numbers here. Uh, this one, you know, you won't play with it at all because that's your rim uh, diameter. So it'll be 20 up front and 22 in the rear. And so these numbers you're able to play around with a little bit so you can find your matching set of tires. And um, if you don't know exactly, you know, how to play around with these numbers, just get on the internet and find out or ask someone that knows because, um, you know, it's, that's critical as far as, you know, it fitting on the rim uh, correctly and uh, your clearance when you when you turn your um to when you turn the front wheel the clearance and the back also as far as you know the width and it clearing the frame when you having to do uh the least amount of modification or anything so this is important so you want to pay attention to your tire sizing so you can get a matching set and um 
and it'll work out for you. I just want to clarify that that's the front and that's the rear. So what I mean by matching set is the same brand, basically the same brand, but different sizes. But you have a stagger, what you call a stagger fitment. Um, this is the more narrow in the front, and this is the the wider one for the rear. And basically the 8-inch rim, and then the 12-inch rim. And uh, so that's basically what I use for that setup. I've tried to include everything that I know to include in this video about how I came up with the fitment and the measurements for my wheels. If I didn't and I wasn't clear enough, just uh, you can send me questions and comments and I'll reply to them. Um, share this video with whoever you think it might help and give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel to see more videos. Thank you.